number 32, Yi Yang. The topic is on the importance of nutrition labels. Hello everyone, how's everyone doing today? Feeling a bit tired? Yeah? <laughs> okay, so before I start my speech, let me just introduce myself. Okay, so my name is Bob, and I'm a grade 10-ish student because I'm going to grade 10 in just about a day. And I'm at White Oaks Secondary School, and I love basketball. And that's about it. But before I start my speech, I ask you guys a question. Do you guys pay attention to the nutrition label? Or some may call it the nutrition fact chart. Looking like this while you're shopping. If you do, please raise your hand. OK, I see not many of you guys pay attention to these. I used to be the same. But by doing so, you guys are missing a huge advantage. Can we just all agree that you can't eat healthy if you don't know what you eat, right? By looking at the nutrition labels, we know what we're eating. So, so for those of you who don't know what a nutrition label is, here's the image of a nutrition label. Please go take a look for yourself. Now, the origin of the nutrition label. The nutrition label was first pushed in 1906 by the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. And this act was made to stop a technique used by the sellers. The technique is called short weight packaging. Short weight packaging is essentially putting less food in each packaged food products. And packaged foods were extremely popular in the late 1900s. So the sellers are making more profit. And that is an image of a nutrition label back in the days. Now, if we compare it to this nutrition label, we obviously can see as science advances, we can know more useful information, such as the sugars, the vitamins, and the minerals. So now, why should you care? So I've analyzed three ways to help you guys to utilize the nutrition labels. So the first way is determining foods for dietary needs. And the second way is to compare foods. And the third and last way is to watch for unhealthy nutrients. So now, can we all agree that if you eat McDonald's every meal, that you're not going to lose weight, right? You need to eat more healthier. So a nutrition label is able to determine healthier food options for us. So if I want to lose weight, I would prioritize foods with low calories, low fats, but with high protein and high fiber. Because high protein is able to gain more muscle and repair and maintain my muscle tissue. So. This is a nutrition label of a food that's in my diet. Can anyone guess what it is? Just yell it. You're correct. It's nuts. Right? The nuts has a high level of protein. And it's great for our muscle building. And to give you an idea of how much protein a man should eat a day, a male like me should eat about 56 grams, while a female may eat about 48 grams, a little bit less. The nut has a high value of 6 grams. Considering the nuts to just be a snack, that's still quite a lot. Now, the second way is to compare foods. Now, here is the image of a regular milk, and there is soy milk. Can we all kind of agree that these two milks are kind of similar in the sense that they're both milks, right? So you may wonder what the difference is, and I'm going to tell you. So first, we can look at the protein levels. They're about the exact same, correct? 
Yes. So the difference actually lies between the minerals and the vitamins. Well, the image over here, which is the regular milk, has more calcium. And the image there, which is the soy milk, has more fiber. So for anyone with any cardiovascular diseases, they might value the extra fiber. But if you don't have any of the diseases, and you value the calcium for better bone building health, the regular milk is for you. Right, so in order to compare foods, first, let's compare the same values. And these will cancel out. And then you can compare the different values. That's the most effective way to compare between these foods. So watching for unhealthy nutrients. There are mainly two unhealthy nutrients that you need to watch for. One is cholesterol, and the second one is trans fat. While low levels of cholesterol may be beneficial, but when you consume too much, it's going to increase the chance of a sudden heart attack. And the trans fat actually adds a mult multiplier to your bad cholesterols. So let's say your bad cholesterol is negative, and you multiply that by a number. Is it going to get more positive or more negative? Can somebody answer? Obviously, it's going to become more negative, right? So it's going to have a greater negative impact on your body. So yeah, here are the three ways that you can use the nutrition labels to determine a diet for yourself, or maybe to compare foods, or maybe just to watch for unhealthy nutrients. Just a reminder for you guys, during this global doldrum, everyone's economic ability actually differs, so do not spend an absurd amount of money on these foods. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you once again, Bob, for your speech. So throughout today's program, what have you learned and uh, are there any benefits to this for you? Uh, 其实就是因为这个疫情，我之前是不知道这个ACPN这个机构的，就是因为这个疫情才让我有了这次机缘，就是说来到ACPN，来到台上，来到演讲。当呃当然了，在这个过程中我也是受益匪浅，就是因为所
as a percent daily value for both. Soy milk and cow's milk comparison is an excellent idea. However, dairy milk and fortified soy are not consumed for extra fiber. Bob could offer more clarity in reading labels for the priority nutrients relevant to the category comparison. Nutrients to limit are saturated and trans fats, sugars, and sodium. Reading the percent daily value is the best way to determine amounts. 5% daily value or less is a little, and 15% daily value or more is a lot. Bob's mention of the history of the nutrition facts table is interesting, but does not help people use it to benefit their healthy eating habits. What's the purpose of short weight information? How is this helpful to the audience who's trying to use today's credible nutrition facts table for information? More information is available at the Health Canada nutrition facts table. Study of weight loss diet is more complex than hypocaloric intake. It's a challenging topic that deserves its own presentation and not just an in passing mention. Also, protein needs are oversimplified and may be misleading in the presentation. Please note there is no percent daily value for protein in the nutrition facts table because it's not a nutrient of public health concern. Bob says grams of protein per day, male 56 grams, female 48 grams. Nutrition recommendations for most adults over 19 years of age is about 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. You can use the following equation to calculate your protein needs. An adult who weighs 80 kilogram or 176 pounds needs about 64 grams of protein each day, while an adult who weighs 65 kilograms or 143 grams needs about 52 grams of protein each day. For individualized nutrition, it's recommended people talk to a registered dietitian to help determine the amount of protein that's right for them. More information is available at HealthLink BC, Quick Nutrition Check for Protein. Overall, a lot of nutrition information is combined in this presentation and better focus on the nutrition facts tables use and impact would be helpful. The ending of the presentation says, don't spend an absurd amount of money on your food. Would you consider a positive option for your ending? For example, spend your food money wisely and purchase nutrient-dense foods. Or, reading food labels can help you spend your food money more wisely. So now we're going to be pre presenting the 2022 National Nutrition Day Wellness Pioneer Award. And when we, may we please have the leadership speaker, Mr. C.J. Kilvert, to come on stage. Jonathan Jia, Family Wellness Leadership. Valencia Lau, Family Wellness Leadership. Ri Chan Wang, Life Cycle Wellness Management. Claire, Visualize Health Science by Cartoon. Anderson Wang, Visualize Health Science by Video. Ryan Wayne, Health Science Fiction. Emberly and his personalized efficacy management. Well, folks, I've had the pleasure of seeing your videos. Carrie has shared one with me. And you students, all of you, have done an amazing job with your presentations. Uh, it is just such a pleasure for me to get to see young, emerging leaders like yourselves and all of you down here who are about to get awards as well. Uh, watching your videos, you spoke so well, you were so confident so knowledgeable. I wish I spoke as well as you spoke when I was your age. You did a tremendous job, all of you, and you deserve to feel very proud of yourselves. So everyone, let's give these wonderful young emerging leaders a round of applause for their fantastic leadership presentations and wellness. Anderson Chan. 
Albert Zhao, Nathan Shing, Ensign Chan. These are age group four to six. Gold Award winner goes to Andrew Yang Mobacher. Uh, I'm so happy to be here um, to get this uh, very special award and I was waiting for that like at the stage there I told my friends like I was so excited to get this first place and I really did and during my uh, competition time like when I said a lot of stuff I had a very hard time to memorize it so <laughs> yeah a very hard time and then my mom, yeah, my mom just told me, why don't, why don't, why don't just like um, read the text and think about it and resume it every time. So every time when I go somewhere shopping or playing or either um, going to McDonald's, <laughs> but that's not healthy food. <laughs> and I always like resume the text in my head and I always think um, about healthy food like broccoli <laughs> and all that <laughs> and no matter if they taste good or not I always eat them thank you, thank you Andrew thank so you. thank you everyone and all right. again I see a little bit of myself in you if you can take that as a compliment I uh, just see huge things for you in whatever career path you take but you are setting such a wonderful leadership example by sharing your positive message of wellness. Keep it up, buddy. You're doing a great job. Well done. And now we're going to present the Gold Award. And the Gold Award goes to Victoria Orodowski. So first I'd like to say Happy National Nutrition Day. And I am very grateful to be able to receive this gold award. Um, I'd like to thank the organizers of this event. They say thank you to ACPN and all the members. And obviously all the speakers today, including you, CJ. I think I learned so much today. And I think people who never, like, people who aren't as involved in health, I don't think I would ever have learned so much information if I didn't come to this event. This is like information of a lifetime, and I'm so grateful to be able to be here and absorb all this knowledge in one day. Thank you so much.